Dear friends and family, welcome to our virtual worship. We are glad that you are here with us. Today we are going to meditate on Matthew chapter 13 verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 55. The significance of insignificance. Find the hidden treasure. These are a couple of parables that we read in this text and I'm sure as you carry your Bible and as you take your uh, t and read this text, I'm sure this will speak to you. And we may, many of us struggle with uh, lack of significance in our life and especially in during this period in our life. We have put together a couple of good songs and a congregational video. I'm sure you will enjoy this. Please share this on your social media and share with your friends and family. Please pray with me. God, our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you. We commit our service into your hand. We ask you, O Lord, to bless us and help us. Help us to feel your presence. Come and touch each and every one of us, O God. Bless our community. We stand at the gap for our community, our school, our library, our food pantry, and the new uh, investment that's coming our way, the gas station. We pray for everything that's happening in our community, O oh God. We ask you, O oh Lord, to protect our community, uh, protect and safeguard us, O oh God. Lord Jesus, we commit each and every member of our church. We commit every leaders in our church, O oh God. We ask you, O oh Lord, to bless every one of us as we come before you with the small gift that we have. And we ask you, O oh Lord, to continue to bless us. We give you the glory and honor, give you thanks and praises. In Jesus' precious name, we offer this prayer. Amen and amen. Please enjoy the service. everyone happy Sunday today we're gonna to talk about treasure now when you hear the word treasure what do you think of I often think of pirates because they love to find treasure can you guys tell me what does a pirate say I'm ready. <laughs> yeah I'm ready Army hunters. Ahoy, matey. Very good, you guys. You guys make great pirates. Well, did you know that there was a time that when people would find treasure, say they found it in their field, like in our scripture reading today, they would bury that treasure so that no one else would find it and come and take it. 
Now there was always a chance, of course, that they would forget where they buried it. So, what did they use? Yes, just like on this map, they used an X. X marks the spot. That's where that expression came from, so they could remember where their treasure was. Have you ever dreamed about following an old treasure map like this and finding gold? Well, today I'm going to tell you about a treasure that is even more valuable than gold. In our scripture reading today, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and then hid again. In his joy, he went and sold all he had and bought the whole field. Now, if we want to find the treasure that Jesus is talking about, what map could we use? The Bible. Yeah, the Bible can be our map. It can direct us the way to find the treasure that Jesus is speaking of. Now, the Bible can sometimes be confusing. So what could we use to help us find that treasure? What could be our X? <gasps> yes, the cross. Can you kind of see it shaped like an X here? X marks the spot. See, Jesus died on the cross so that we could all enter the kingdom of heaven. So when we put our faith and trust in the cross, the treasure is ours. To enter the kingdom of heaven is the greatest treasure we could ever desire. It is better than gold, it's better than jewels, it's better than money. And that is why Jesus calls us to give up everything we own and to follow him. Will you guys pray with me about that? Thank you so much. You can bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear God, nothing we have can compare to life in the kingdom of heaven. Help us to place our trust in you so that we may find that priceless treasure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful week. I was to make a video here to, to show something that I treasure here on Earth. And here is a money clip with their dollar bill in it that uh, prior to my dad's passing he started giving things to his children and one day while I was over there he got this out and he said here Stan this is yours uh, this is what I'm giving you and he was giving this to me as what he wanted me to have and uh, I cherish this and I treasure this and I keep it on my dresser to remind me and it makes me laugh because it reminds me of the Steve Martin movie The Jerk you know all I need is this and personally here a treasure on earth I got many of them but this one I treasure because my dad gave it to me which means the world to me thank you hi my name is Joanne and um, I've been asked to talk about something that's a treasure to me in my life other than my family and all my children and even my brand new great-grandchild um, that we just had is I found my books. I have these books that I've had for some time that's been a treasure to me. Um, they're called Two from Galilee, Three from Galilee, and The Messiah. And they're stories about Mary and Joseph first meeting and growing together and, and then later on in the first book I believe Jesus is born. And then the second one, Three from Galilee, is about him growing up. And then the, he comes to Messiah, and this is the best book of the three. He talks all about his walks, getting his disciples together. And it always felt to me like I was just right there with them in this mm. book. So it was a great pleasure for me, and I treasure them all. <laughs> Now, who wouldn't be proud of that? That's the most powerful sound there is in the world, and it feeds the world. John Deere tractors. I cherish this tractor very much, and for the reason that it reminds me of my childhood, growing up in the summers on my grandparents' farm and driving their tractors around. 
It also, again, reminds me of how much farmers provide food for the entire world and the U.S. and that it's such a blessing to have been a part of a farmer's family. Thank you. And then I mentioned, when I have these on, my cell phone and Pandora and listen to the gospel music, I'm as close to heaven as I could probably be while I'll be here on this earth. Hi, this is uh, one of the things I love, absolutely love in my life. And uh, I would say one of the things, I'd say this, the collection, the collection. But the first thing here is my six string Martin guitar, which I love. Here's my Fender Stratocaster. This is my Fender bass. I use for recording quite often. This is my Fender Telecaster, which I use for live performances and recording as well, which I love. You've all seen my banjo. I played at church quite a few times. It's a little out of tune right now, but I love my banjo. It's heavy. This is my 12-string guild guitar. I gotta make some repairs to it, but it's it's uh, one of my loves too. So these are all my babies, and thank I'm you for your- McClellan. Uh, Carla asked me to talk about something that meant a lot to me that I have, and I wanna talk a little bit about this turtle. I've had this for 17 years. Uh, it was given to me by my husband because he knows that I love turtles. They mean a lot to me. It's a little turtle with swore off ski crystals on it. Um, turtles are very precious to me because they represent wisdom and a long life. And also in the Native American lore, um, the turtle was responsible for helping to build Turtle Island which is the North America continent. And uh, it just means a lot to me, so I wear it a lot. The other thing I want to talk about is this heart. My, as you know, uh, my great-granddaughter, Vanny and I were very close, and they recently moved to Florida. And she, on her own, made this heart and brought it to me and said that, I'm going to Florida, but I'm leaving my heart with you. So I hang this on my lamp in the living room and I see it every morning when I get up and then at night when I turn the light out, I see it again. It always reminds me of her. Good morning. I've been asked to talk about something that I treasure and what I chose to talk about is this necklace. And what's special about it to me, I'm not sure you can probably see it, but there's a picture of my grandma Cher on there. And that was taken just shortly before she left Switzerland to immigrate to the United States. She came here as a young woman and uh, she brought with her a set of cufflinks. And this is one of the cufflinks and we don't know what happened to the other one for sure, but my mom had it made into a necklace that was her favorite necklace and she wore it all the time. Um, and now I have it and it is a treasure to me because it helps me remember a very good memories of my grandma Cher. And I admired her bravery and, and her adventure nature to come to the United States on her own, not knowing uh, hardly anyone. And uh, it's just a very special necklace to me. And that is one of my treasures. Thank you. This was my birthday gift when we were over in Pakistan from my husband. And it's made out of shisham wood. Right. And there's little boys anywhere from about 10 years on up that do the carving. And then they cut the brass in thin, thin strips and there's little leaves of brass. Yeah. And there's a little nail that Aww. they use to hold it on. This is another treasure that I have. Oh, yeah. And my daughter, my oldest daughter traveled with us during our vacations and stuff for I don't know how many years it took her to make all the squares to put it together. But mm. I liked my the one that was at my grandmother's house and it was just like this, the squares, the granny squares. 
And so she decided to make me one to replicate the my awesome. grandmother. Good morning, hope everybody's doing well. I'm just seeing everybody. Um, but this is great that we can still do this. Um, my name is Angela Cody, and I wanted to share something that means a lot to me. It might have a little bit of a long story, but I'll try to sum it up. Um, Lucy Zeller had done my mom a huge favor one time. Went to my family farm and took some really good shots at the farm, especially, or it's one that everybody loves. And um, it's just important everybody has everybody has their own family, their own rooms and things. And this is the one that she took. And I always wanted to have it enlarged and um, bigger so I can enjoy it within my home more. So guess what? Two years ago, Doreen did just that and surprised me with it and had it framed and these had these uh, amazing uh, leaves from our front yard as part of it too. So I treasure this. This is the farm that my mom and all of grew up and I actually have like I have memories of growing up with it. This is being a grandkid, but we lived there when they were building our house on uh, Riverview Drive, and it was the best summer living on a farm that me and my brother were having our life and talk about it to this day. So when I look at this, I not only see like the history, of course, of, of my, my parents or my mom, but of my own too. So it just has a lot a lot of memories. It's it's heartwarming and I'm so proud that Dorwin did this. But as you all know, he's a one of a kind and a very special guy. He knew how important it was meant to me. Yes, I can cry. So it's hard not to know. But yeah, this will always mean everything to me. So thank you for listening. Happy Sunday morning to everyone. This is Diana and Carla had asked if I would share a few things that I cherish and since she said it couldn't be my grandchildren or family, these are some of the things that I have throughout my house that Stanley has drawn and I thought it was easier just to put them all together. The first one is a wintry scene with the horse-drawn sleigh which is a ride that I would love to do someday. The dish is part of the dishes my mom and dad received from his mom and dad when they moved to Peoria. Love You Too is a reminder of Monty. A butterfly reminds me of Shelly. This first picture is my Grandpa Walden's home, my mom's dad's house. This is a picture of my house and my dad walking down the street. This is the barnyard of my grandma and grandpa Dodie's. This is um, the farm of my, I believe my great grandpa Doty in Effingham, Illinois. This pine cone is from my aunt and uncle's house in California that I cherish because they're no longer with us also and it just reminds me of all the fun times I've had in California. The Bible is from the Spring Bay EUB Sunday School in September of 65. The necklace is my dad's thumbprint. The rings are my my wedding rings that symbolizes Doug's love and my love for each other. And the last is my dad's hands that Stan took a picture of and then drew on here. And I cherish it because these are the hands that held me and walked with me and then walked me down the aisle when I married Doug. These are just a few of the things that I cherish that are throughout my house. And I hope you all have a wonderful, blessed Sunday. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then his, in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. 
Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad fish away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come in separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace there where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth have you understood all these things jesus asked yes they replied he he said to them Therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven that is like the, over, the owner of a house who brings of his store new treasures as well as old. The word of God for the people of God. Gospel according to Matthew chapter 13 verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 55. The significance of insignificance. Find the hidden treasure. Today, like never before, we all suffer in various degrees from the increasing fear of our own insignificance. The evolution of Homo globalis, influenced by the global infotainment network, a new species is born. The globalization brings it closer, all the human race together. A global man who is obsessed by wealth and celebrity status. The cre th this created unstable self-esteem and an unstable society. People who are made very well in life, even today, unfortunately struggle with the lack of significance. Even spirituality has changed to be pop spiritualism that promises instant change and instant relief or instant gratification. People who have reached measurable achievement need to stabilize themselves and keep the fear of insignificance away from themselves. How is that possible? While the media is feeding you with the spiritual junk food, you should invest your time and thoughts to develop your worldview or self-understanding and understanding about who you are and whose you are. That is why I love the church because we have an active Bible study or a small group or an accountability group you and I are part of. We are all influenced by the global network, global academia, the uh, global art, technology, influence, uh, finance, and medicine. We have developed a thought that everything is somehow possible. No matter how much you achieve in your own life, you still struggle with the persistent doubt about your own influence. What we see is the fact that humanity is self-destructing. Yet our culture and society is busy ranking individuals according to their net worth, celebrity status, rather than their actual achievements. Today, we have YouTube celebrities, Instagram celebrities, and instantaneous viral videos. Do you know that you cannot observe the process of grow, grass growing with your own naked eyes. 
Psalmist once asked this question to God, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? Unlike any other worldview or philosophy, I love the Judeo-Christian worldview. I am a believer in Christian theism. Remember, I come from the land of religion, ideologies and philosophies. Our significance is not measured by our physical size, but rather our own moral worth. In Christian theism, one human being is worth more than the entire material universe put together. How can we achieve such a confidence? How do we overcome the fear of being unnoticed and forgotten? You and God are a majority. How can we learn the significance of being insignificant for a worldly eyes? It might, not, it might not be important to know the latest ideologies, philosophies, theologies or methodologies. You may never go viral or you might not be noticed by others. Can we be significantly insignificant for the glory of God? The Bible is full of such stories. If God loves us, if Christian belief is true, if Christ died for our sins, you and I are worthwhile in the light of God's kingdom. Let me ask you to think about this question for a minute. Anything in your life once had very little significance, got greater significance in your life? It might be an ordinary wooden table, a handmade tool. But if it was made by your own grandmother or grandfather, there are a lot of sentimental values associated to it. Little child from Nazareth, little Israel, a community or a nation that spent most of its years in the foreign land as a, a as 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 as, as a foreigner, a cross, a little village church, a small family living in the wood, an average sermon, an average congregation, a loaf of bread and a cup of wine. For human eyes they may seem like nothing, but for you, but for God it provides immense opportunity and possibilities. We have witnessed this truth over and over again uh, the past two millennia. These parables that we read today tells us about the real power found in the humblest thing, people or places. We have five or six parables in our reading today. While the powerful Roman Empire is only found in the history books, the children of God continue to sing the songs of praise, even though the kingdom's form is perpetually little, always uh, seed-sized divinely designed to be a treasure in earthen vessels so that the exceeding greatness of the gospel's power might always be God's not humans with the power of Christ we can make a huge difference you and I seem unimportant for the world yet let me tell you the story is not over the book is not complete the final chapters are not written yet in our reading today the kingdom of heaven is compared with a grain of mustard seed east hidden treasure the pearl weeds and the net this offers us hope promising great outcomes from small beginnings the tiny quantity affects a large quality quantity this is so true with those who serve jesus though there's a the parable of the mustard seed and the yeast contrast small beginnings with their great efforts emphasizing the power of god's action they are addressed to the crowd the parables of the hidden treasure and the parable have to do with objects of great value which speak uh, great commitment they are addressed to the disciples the parables of the net and the parable of the weed was uh, 24 to 30 last week uh, gospel reading emphasized the present uh, openness of the kingdom of to all who enter the great judgment to come in which the bad will be separated from the good jesus is knocking on your door today will you allow christ to come into your heart 
prophet Isaiah reminds the Babylonian exile community, a remnant, a Jewish community who are slaves there. Remember not the former thing, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it is spring forth. You do not perceive it. I will make a way in the wilderness and reverse in the desert. Always leave people better than you found them. Find hidden treasures in them. As long as you have a dream in your heart, you cannot lose the significance of living. Every life has a meaning, whether it is last, whether it lasts 100 years or 100 seconds. Every life and every death change the world in its own way. You cannot know, so you don't take it for granted. But don't take it too seriously. Don't postpone what you need. Don't leave anything, mis anyone, anything misunderstood. Make sure the people you care about know. Make sure they know how you really feel. Embracing insignificance can improve in your life once you realize you don't matter everything matters I remember once my one of my mentor told me these words if you don't want to take the glory and credit God will do many things through you and with you if you are in pain if you feel insignificant you are not alone if it seems like the world is crashing you. You are not alone. If you feel that you are wasting your time, you are not alone. If your future is uncertain, you are not alone. If you feel meaningless and insignificant, you are not alone. If nothing seems to work out, you are not alone. If you are, no, if you are at your limit and you are ready to throw in the towel, you are not alone. When you are not alone, you are are not alone if you relate to anything I just said you are not alone I am right here with you and so is God Jesus and the Holy Spirit every day uh, every day we are close to God close to Jesus Christ Sam says in 23 4 a eh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil for thou art with me thy road and thy staff they comfort me Samus continues to say in 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, not be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is, is with you. And uh, the text continue to say, the Bible continue to say that I will never leave you nor forsake you. These are words of Christ. No matter if you are important or significant to the world, compared to this vast universe, you might be a tiny dust. But I assure you one thing, you are important to God. Whenever you feel insignificant, remember that you are important to God. God has chosen you to be a blessing for many. You are always on God's mind. The psalmist continued to say, How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. They outnumber the grains of the sand. And when I woke up, you are all still with me. Not everyone is going to think you are worth uh, talking to, worth believing in, or worth uh, liking. But Jesus thought you were worth loving. And that's all that matters, my friend my beloved you are important to God you fit into his purpose you are not an accident please pray with me gracious our everlasting Heavenly Father we come before you today Lord Jesus especially during this pandemic during this lockdown stage where we don't have the freedom to expand where we don't have the opportunity to come together we all feel deep down in our heart some kind of insignificance we feel that we are lost Lord in the middle of our struggle we invite you all Lord to come just like the treasure that the man found in the waters or just like the the mustard seed that grow into a big plant Lord Jesus we ask you our Lord to come and help us fill our void heart 
help us to come together as a community of community of faith help us to rejoice in your praise and sing praises unto you O lord give us your strength that we dearly need give us the significance that we dearly need O god give us purpose and meaning to our life put some colors into our life O god it is so empty it is so we feel the meaninglessness we feel the emptiness deep in our heart we ask you our father come and fill our heart and help us we give you the glory and honor give our life back to you O god use it for your glory for the expansion of your kingdom in jesus precious name we offer this prayer Amen and Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day. Amen and Amen.